This feature lets you transform any strategy into a fully custom alert directly on TradingView. No limits, just pure creative control. It's called Alert Scripting, and it's by far the most powerful alert system ever developed on TradingView. We're putting that power right into the hands of every trader. We'll guide you through everything you need to know, from placeholders and operators to syntax and real-world script examples. By the end, you'll have the skills and knowledge to build the most powerful alerts and take part of, or your entire strategy to the next level. So what exactly is alert scripting? Simply put, it's a way to create fully custom alerts from the ground up. Unlike basic alerts, which are predefined and trigger on simple signals, alert scripting allows you to build alerts for just about anything you can imagine. Each alert script is made up of three key components, placeholders, operators, and the syntax. Once you understand these, you'll be able to create any alert you can imagine. We'll start with placeholders. There are over 100 placeholders available when combined across the price action concepts, the signals and overlays, and the oscillator matrix indicators. And they can be grouped into seven main categories. The first, which are the market data placeholders. These placeholders include anything related to basic data on the chart, such as a candle close, open, or volume. Next, we have time-related placeholders. These allow you to carve out specific time periods to trigger your alerts, such as the New York, London, or Asian session. External placeholders allow you to use up to five external indicators as a part of your script. For example, the MACD, the Bollinger Band, or a moving average. They all can be combined with the features of the Luxalgo indicators to create more complex alert systems. Next, we have Custom Alert Creator Placeholders. These allow you to reference a setup that you might have created using our previous alert system. Next, we have Sequencing Placeholders. These will help when creating alerts using the Steps feature or if you're invalidating a condition which now brings us to the toolkit-specific placeholders. These are placeholders that are exclusive to each of the three toolkits and provides you with direct access to all the features within each indicator. And finally, UDP, or user-defined placeholders, lets you create a brand new placeholder based on a set of conditions you define, and then you'll be able to reference those conditions in the future by just using that placeholder name you created earlier. Now this is a lot to take in, but stay with us, because we'll be showing you examples of using these placeholders shortly. But before that, to make use of these alerts, you'll be using them alongside what are called operators. These can be broken down into three categories. There are comparison operators, which as the name suggests can be used to compare two or more items. For example, to check if two items are equal, greater than or not equal to each other. There are also cross operators that help identify the exact points where two values intersect. The logical operators will allow you to connect blocks or conditions together. This will be done using the key phrases of AND or OR. And finally, we have the historical referencing operator which allows you to access past data. To start using them, go to the settings of the indicator. Scroll down to the alert scripting section. And this is where we can start combining our placeholders and operators to create alert scripts. So let's break down the anatomy of a few alert scripts here. This script is for the oscillator matrix. We're checking for a bullish divergence occurring during bearish overflow, but the hyperwave must also be below the 50 level and has started to trend higher. Now, to break down this script, we have five placeholders and six operators. Three of those operators are logical operators, two are comparison operators, and one is an historical reference operator. Placeholders are always enclosed in curly brackets. This is how the script knows they are placeholders, and the operators are being used to collaborate those placeholders. So we have a placeholder that is first looking for a bullish divergence, but the AND operator ensure that this condition will not be true unless there is also an oversold bullish hyperwave. Once both of those conditions are met, it then looks for an overflow reading that needs to be below 50%, and the current hyperwave reading needs to be greater than the previous hyperwave value. And if this hyperwave reading is true, it means the hyperwave slope is upwards. Now, this is an example where we use the AND operator. The AND operator means that all those conditions must be true at the same time in order for the alert to be triggered. Let's look at another example where we use the OR operator. In this example, we're using the Signals and Overlays toolkit, and we're looking for bullish confirmation signals within a specific time period. We're still using an AND operator, but notice how we also have an OR operator. So now we have two main blocks of script which are looking for bullish or bearish confirmation signals during a specific time of the day, and they are connected with an OR operator. So either of these conditions needs to be true in order for an alert to be triggered. Now with this system, you can of course create really complex alerts spanning multiple lines. So what if I wanted to reference this exact set of conditions again without rewriting the entire thing? Well, that's where UDP or user-defined placeholders comes into play. This will allow us to easily reference this set of conditions at any point in the future without rewriting the entire script. For example, 
to access these conditions again easily in the future. All we need to do is create a new original placeholder name. We'll call it Session Execution and have it equal to the conditions we outlined. Now we can call Session Execution at any point in the future to be able to use those exact conditions again. Now, UDPs, as well as any placeholders for that matter, can also be used in Steps. The Steps feature allows conditions to be executed in very specific sequences before an alert is triggered, and to achieve this we'll use line breaks. In this example, we're looking at the Price Action Concepts Toolkit, and in this sequence, which uses Steps, we're looking for the following conditions. A 200 simple moving average crossing under the closing price, then a bullish change of character, followed by price entering an order block with higher buying volume than selling volume, then a bullish break of structure. Let's break down the alert script. In the first line, we define our UDP, which checks if the buying volume is greater than the selling volume within the order block, and we name this placeholder Volume Checker. We will be using this later in the script. On the next line, which represents the next step, we check if the external indicator has cross under the closing price. External one is the moving average which we have on our chart and have set using the drop-down menu. Next step, we check for a bullish change of character. And since there are two types of bullish change of characters, we use the OR operator to check both. We then check if the price has entered an order block, but we're also going to use our volume checker UDP which we defined earlier, and by using an AND operator, we ensure that both conditions are true. So we're checking if price has entered an order block AND, that buying volume is greater than selling volume. Once these conditions are met, we move to the next step, which is checking for a bullish break of structure. But we can add further logic to this. We can also incorporate an invalidation step using the invalidate feature. We will have it restart the sequence from step one if at any point during these steps a bearish change of character forms or if the number of bars between steps is equal to or greater than 40 candles. This will ensure that the sequence happens exactly how we defined it and also that the steps are not too far apart. This is a great example of how you can use the alert scripting feature to create really complex alerts for your strategy. Now, as much as we've covered today, we're still only scratching the surface of what's possible with this new feature, but we hope this video gave you valuable insights into how alert scripting works and how the scripts can be constructed. We're excited to see how you'll use this feature. Let us know about your experience in the comments and be sure to join our Discord community to provide feedback and help shape future updates to this feature. Thank you for watching and until next time.